Alrighty, uh, I've done a video like this before, but I thought I would go at it again, just because I find it so entertaining for myself. Uh, so this is Bottleneck Calculator. This is basically a website where you punch in a bunch of stuff, uh, your CPU and GPU, or what you plan to get, and see if it will bottleneck based on, I don't know, I don't know what. But anyways, we're looking at the i5-8400 and the GTX 1660, which is a decently middle-end gra graphics card with a middle-end processor. So if we look down here, you can see that the graphics card and process will work great together, which it will. 100% it will. But my problem is, let's look at this one. So this one is an i5-7600K, meaning it's unlocked. This one isn't unlocked whatsoever. The top speed it goes to, it says turbo speed, is 4.1, which isn't true. It's 4. Point, sorry, 4.0, which isn't true. It is a 4.1, if you keep it cool. Uh, that's pretty much all you can do for this uh, CPU. You cannot overclock it. It is not a K edition, which means it's unlocked. But you can get it up to 4.1. This one is unlocked. This one I know you can get up to a 5.1 if you overclock it with a liquid cooler. Regardless of that, let's just look at it. So it has a regular speed of 4.2, which is higher. This one is only a 4 core by 4 thread, which blah blah blah. But it says it's got 16... Uh, of a bottleneck, 16%, 16.2, so your processor is too weak for this graphics card, okay, whatever. So now let's go up to this newer one, which is the i3, 8350K, which is an absolute great processor, and it hid under the radar, because this is, is a little bit of expensive, but you can overclock this thing to, like, insane numbers to get amazing graphics. And it says it will bottleneck 14 of 0.45, okay. So, it says that this will run it fine, and these two will bottleneck it for whatever reason. Now, the only difference is this one's 6 cores by 6 thread, but these ones are 4 cores by 4 thread that are unlocked for overclocking. Most games only use 4 cores, 4 threads, tops. Not really too many games use anymore. Anyways, let's just take a quick little look. So, if we look at this, this is the i5-7600K versus the i5-8400. It averagely, it, it's average specs... 4% higher than the competitor. So it scores on average 83% for gaming, this one scores 80, 86 for desktop, and where it really shines for this one from having six threads is for the workshop. For obvious reasons, streaming, uh, multitasking, engineering, anything sort of like that, it will beat it. But the overclock percentage is 9% higher, and on average will be, you know, better. So the average user, like not overclocking of course, is going to get 5%, but if you take a little gander at the best benchmark, which is a 5.1, like I said, and we can take a quick little gander at it, and it scored 98.1%. For being an old CPU, it's scoring next to pretty much newer i7s. This guy got an amazing score, and it's not too hard to overclock the CPU. It's pretty much idiot proof. So let's just go back and look at the best one for this and it scored 83.9 and yeah <laughs> so I don't know anyways let's go on to the next one so now we're looking at the 8400 versus the i3 8350k which 83 85% average went up to a 5.1 same as the 7600k which we're going to look at the overclock 9% so, let's see who got the best benchmark, and what score did they get? So, 98.7. Just a little bit lower than the other one. And the best will still be that. Uh, so, the point I'm trying to make is, these, this CPU should be doing better, and this CPU should be doing better. Let's just look it up. Just compare them against each other. So, that's base clock of... 3.8 versus 4, 5G's base clock, 5.1, like this CPU crushes it and beats it by 1% on an overclock benchmark basis, and scores pretty much exactly the same. And then the 8400, for whatever reason, says it's going to do better. Uh, so 2% average, so this one's going to be 14.45. And this one, that pretty much is the exact same, somehow scores even worse. So I don't know where they're getting this 14 
percent and the 16 percent meaning that it's over 10 percent worse than a processor that's clearly scoring on average better like i don't know it just seems funny to me and i'm sure if we switch it over to the i5 9400f it's going to be scoring even better so average benchmark, 8% overclock, blah, blah, blah. So it's actually scoring a little bit worse. But let's just see what, uh, what happens here. Just bear with me. So we'll switch over to Intel. i5. 9400F. So 2% is going to turn into, I'm guessing, like 1.1% bottleneck, which is complete bullshit. Like everything this website says. Yeah, 0 0.75. <sighs> OK. Now let's just uh, look this up just for shits and gigs, just to see what the actual difference is between these two, which isn't that much. So somehow it's ditching. So much of a percent, 3.9, 3.85 of a five decimal. I mean, on average, it does score a little bit better. It is much faster, well, by a bit. Yeah, I, I, I just can't wrap my head around this math. 16% weaker. So let's just see. I5, 7,600K. And this one still beats it still above in gaming. So I don't know. 